Okay, we'll start out in our comfy seat. If you're not sure um, what kind of comfy seat you want, I'll give you just a little option to consider. We can start off by sliding one heel very close into your hips so that the bottom of your foot flips up and the top of your foot is kind of rolling down. And we can take the other foot and kind of tuck it in very close, just the same way. And then hopefully you find you can sit up nice and tall and close your eyes. And we'll just breathe here for a moment, just existing. Human beings doing nothing. And that's okay. <laughs> let your eyes close and let the breath come softly through your nose. Notice how you feel. And allow your awareness to rest in this moment with your breath. Notice how it feels to inhale fully, filling your lungs with fresh, expansive, clean energy. Notice how it feels to exhale fully, completely emptying your lungs, cleaning them out, getting rid of anything and everything that no longer works. You can use your imagination there, okay? Continue to breathe this way with me. Maybe feel a little bit longer with each inhale, a little bit taller in your spine. Rooting down more firmly through the sitting bones. Maybe you find that equal weight in each side of your hips can help you rock the weight back a little bit. So your belly button's pulling in slightly. And your low back rises up out of the bowl of the pelvis like a strong tree. The rib cage floats really nicely over the hips and the shoulder blades are heavy down the back. Allow all of this to contribute to a buoyant feeling in your heart. Okay, and on our journey of awareness, moving up the spine, maybe even put a little tuck in your chin so the back of your neck can lengthen more fully. And now become aware of the whole length of your spine from the floor to the top of your head. Maybe visualize here with me a beautiful glow coming from that spinal column. Radiating outward to all of your parts. Let the glow become brighter with each breath. See if you could send this breath, this deep breath through any places that feel tense. Okay, imagine breathing into and out of maybe your hip creases or your low back or your chest near your shoulders where we get tense. And for your last few breaths, maybe stretching that inhale and exhale out even longer, maybe a second longer on both sides. Bring your awareness to your mind and your thoughts and just watch from the stillness of your seated posture in this moment. Watch your thoughts. Observe with compassion and amusement.
And as you're ready, let's begin to move. You can keep your eyes closed if you like. I'll try to use my words so that you don't necessarily even have to open your eyes yet. With your inhale, arms come up. Keep your neck long, shoulders heavy. As you exhale, twist to the left. Okay, think of pointing your nose over your left shoulder and touching your fingers down, right fingers in front, left fingers in back. Back through center on your inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to the right, same thing. Fingers touch be be behind and before. Let's take a few more rounds just like this. Inhaling through center with our longest spine. Exhaling to twist. Beginning to warm up that spinal column. Ribs, shoulders, and core. Maybe three more times on each side. Finding a little more expansion, a little more space. Two more times. Last round. Next time you twist out to the right. Okay, so just hang out here. We'll meet here. Fingers in front, fingers behind, longest spine. Let's hang out and deepen this maybe by taking the left hand to the outer edge of the right knee and very uh, respectfully without pulling or tugging too much. Let's take a few breaths here. You can use that grip on the leg and your fingers behind you to lengthen the spine on the inhales and deepen your twist on the exhales. I really recommend using those strong belly muscles on the exhales to wrap the belly button in toward the spine. Think of twisting from the belly button up. And let's bring it back through center, big breath in. Over to the other side, looking up to the left, over that left shoulder, hold here. Let's deepen this one, okay? Right hand to the outer left knee, tug gently, no pain please. Long spine, inhale. Big exhale, belly button to spine, deepen that twist. Take a few more breaths here. And let's bring it back through center. Okay, from here, just roll over your knees. We'll come through to hands and knees. Let's do some cat cows. Pull the heart forward on the inhale with your extended arched spine. We think of lifting the belly button as we do that. Exhale to push the floor away, rounded spine. Again, inhale, arch. Elbows move in slightly, so the upper body is very active here. Exhale, push that floor. Okay, I wanna take a few more rounds like this. Now get side to side with it a little bit. Okay, you can think of your spine as like a jump rope. And come back to a flat back and I'll meet you here at a tabletop. Tuck your toes here, please. Let's press it up and back to a down dog. So with your down dog, uh, it's our first one of the practice. So we're not super warm in the legs. Walk your heels out. Don't feel like you have to fully extend your knees at this point, not necessary. We're just kind of seeing how it feels. Shake your head, yes. And shake your head, no. And let's roll the shoulders all the way around that shoulder joint. 
And then roll the shoulder blades back around the other way. Okay, friends, let's start to move. Inhaling here, move your heart forward. Find a long plank-like shape. And remember, plank can always be with your knees down. Totally fine. With your exhale, see if you can tiptoe to your hands. Tiptoe, tiptoe. And then when you get there, drop your heels, bend your knees, and fold. Let that head hang. Roll it up on your inhale. Coming up, reaching your spine as long and tall as you can get it. Okay, pull your belly button in here. We'll take a side bend. So exhaling, reach your hands to one side. Move your hips in the opposite direction. Bring it back up to center on your inhale. Keep that belly button in. Other side. Exhale. Hips one way, hands the other. Bring it back up on your inhale. Exhale here. Drop it into a chair posture. Okay, we want to think of pulling the belly button in, lifting the heart away from the hips. Back up to standing on your inhale. And exhale. Fold here. Bend your knees. Hinge at your hips. Palms contact the floor. So maybe we bend the knees to make that happen. Come halfway up on your inhale, look forward. Maybe knees are still bent. And exhale, fold all the way down. Palms are coming down here. So with your inhale, step your feet back to a plank. Exhale here and slow motion, lower yourself down. Maybe your knees come down first to help out. Maybe you challenge yourself to keep them up. You decide. On your inhale, grip the mat. Pull your cobra heart forward. So big cobra. Strong arms, elbows in. Heart moves up. And exhale. Let that go. Tuck your toes. I'll meet you back in a down dog. Walk it out here. Let's take a little bit more time. Just kind of dynamic down dog, moving it around. And remember, you can always really bend your knees in down dog or just drop to your knees if you need a break. So I do want you to modify and listen to your body, please. Let's take another little vinyasa just to clear things out, warm it up. We'll go a little bit faster this time, okay? Inhaling here, heart moves forward, find a plank. Exhale, tiptoe to your hands and fold. Roll it up on your inhale. Another side bend. This time, interlace your fingers. Flip your palms up. Keep that belly button in. And exhale to one side. Inhale to bring it up. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale here. Drop it into your chair posture. Belly button in. See if you can curl your toes up off the mat. Inhale back to standing and exhale fold. Halfway up for your inhale. You can also put your fingers on your shins and exhale big fold. Palms are down. Inhale back to a plank. Exhale all the way down. Elbows in. Keep the elbows in for your cobra. Inhale, pull your heart forward with your strong arms. And exhale, down dog. Take a little, another little walk out here. We'll do one more little vinyasa just to get the joints warm. Okay. And you can always skip the vinyasas, by the way, and just take a break. So same thing. Here we go. Inhaling heart forward, plank. Exhaling, tiptoe to your hands, fold Roll it up, inhale. Another side bend. This time we'll deepen it. Grab your elbows, belly button in. Exhale to one side. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale back to center. Okay, keep those elbows back. Keep the neck long. Exhale, drop it into your chair. Pull that belly button in. Inhale to stand, and exhale, release your arms full. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down here, inhale, back to plank. Exhale, elbows in, come all the way down. 
Cobra, inhale, pull that heart up and forward. Exhale, down dog. Okay, let's take five or six breaths in this, our first really intentional down dog. Now that we're quite warm in the shoulders, a bit warm in the backs of the legs. Just kind of finding that grip in your hands, finding length on all sides of the belly, please. We want to find a lift of the kneecaps that accompanies a drop in the heels. Now, your heels might not come all the way down. That's not a problem at all. No problem at all. But they're moving in that direction. They're moving down. Let's start to move. With your inhale, let's get the right leg up and out behind. And with your exhale, send that right foot forward. You can drop the right foot outside your right hand. We'll drop the back knee. Use that right knee to press yourself up. Let's find a low lunge, okay? And you can just put your hands on your hips for now. And we'll just talk about engaging these legs. So this is our base, our two legs. That's all we got. So let's try to make it really strong. The way we want to do that is by drawing those knees toward each other, thinking of gathering all the tissues of your inner thighs up in towards your hips, okay, in towards your pelvis, and really strengthening that base, Okay, so we've got the strong legs. Arms are coming up overhead. Big breath in. As you exhale, pull back on that right heel like you're trying to move the right heel toward the back of the mat. Maybe turn your arms into cactus arms and deepen your lunge here. So elbows down, heart up, hips draw forward. And we'll inhale. Hands reach up, back out of that lunge a little bit. Let's do that again, okay? Exhaling here, draw the right heel back. Allow your hips to come forward, cactus arms. Inhale back out of it a little bit. We'll do it one more time. Exhale here, pull back on that right heel. Okay, let the right hamstring do its magic. Let's hold here for three breaths. Strong legs, please. Two breaths. Last breath. Nice. As you're ready, come out of this. Drop hands under your shoulders. We'll come on back to a down dog. I'll meet you there. All right, walk out the legs. Notice how they feel. Let's take a little vinyasa. Inhaling here, heart forward, plank. Exhaling, this time step to your hands and fold. Roll it up for your inhale. Exhale, down into your chair squat. Let's see if we can really drop the hips nice and low. Think about maybe level with your hips. Back up to standing, inhale. Fold on your exhale. Halfway up, inhale. Think of lengthening your heart forward. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down, inhaling here, back to your plank. Exhaling here, all the way down, elbows in. Heart moves forward, inhale for your cobra. Exhale, down, dog. Five or six breaths here, yogis. Walking it out, pedaling it out. Keeping the shoulders uh, sliding down the back. The armpits are trying to look in at each other. So are the elbows. <sighs> okay, we feel the heels are spinning out of sight and the knees are slightly moving in toward each other with those knees. Here we go. Inhaling here, left leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, drop that foot between your hands. Boom. We're dropping the back knee, okay? Right knee is now down. Left knee can help us as we press ourselves up. And you can go ahead and grab your hips for now. We'll talk about strengthening these legs toward each other. So we need the right knee and the left knee attempting to squeeze together, okay? And it doesn't have to be 100% of your strength. Maybe it's just 10 or 20, but give some engagement there and you'll feel it in your right hip flexor, maybe quad and definitely your left hamstring, okay? Which we're about to use big time. So hands up here, inhaling here, arms up. 
at the top of your lunge. And as you exhale, draw the left heel toward the back of the mat so that left hamstring turns on. Maybe cactus arms. Drop your elbows down as your heart lifts. We're inhaling, backing out of this lunge a little bit. Exhaling, use that left hamstring. Pull back on the left heel. Come out on your inhale. One more time, and we'll hold here a few breaths, okay? Exhale, pull yourself deeply into this lunge. Hold and breathe. Remember to pull the belly button in. Remember to pull the knees toward each other. One more breath. We're letting it go. All hands down inside that front foot. Let's send it back to down dog. Walk it out. Notice how the backs of the legs feel now. And let it go. Let's take a little vinyasa. Heart moves forward. Inhale. Exhale. Step to your hands and fold. Roll it up. Inhale. Okay, very nice deep squat here. Exhale, drop into your chair. Draw your knees toward each other. Lift your toes, look forward. Inhale to stand. And exhale, fold. Roll your heart up on the inhale, halfway through. And exhale, deep fold. Palms are down. Inhale, back to your plank. Exhale, lower yourself down. Inhale for that cobra. Exhale, down dog. Let's take five or six breaths here, down dog. Walking it out. Okay, hopefully noticing a big difference in the backs of the legs. And noticing maybe a little more ease settling into this posture. Down dog seems quite simple on the surface, but it's actually a very advanced posture. So don't feel um, daunted if it seems challenging. So it's not you, it's the posture. <laughs> All right, shall we keep moving? Inhaling here, let's send that right leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, drop that right foot between your hands, boom. We'll drop the back heel. So the left heel is coming down. We'll keep a bend in the front knee. Inhaling here, warrior one. Come on up, warriors. We're facing the front of the mat. And although the back heel is down, we're attempting to move the hips to line up with the front of the mat. And that may be a little challenging. Okay, so stay with that challenge, moving that left hip forward as you kind of pull the right hip back. And let's bend deeply into the right knee once we kind of get our bearings here. I want you to think of really pressing through the back foot. So don't be shy. Press into that outer left foot as you draw that right knee to point at its second and third toes. And you're lifting your belly button up to the ceiling here. Warrior one. Okay, one more big breath here. Warrior one. Exhale here. We're spinning it out and open. Warrior two. Okay, we're spinning it back. Warrior one on the inhale, face the front of the mat. Pull that left hip forward, press through the left foot. Exhale, warrior two, open out to the side, the left side of the mat, left hand reaches back. One more time, big breath in, warrior one, hips face forward. Big exhale, warrior two. Hold here and breathe in your warrior two. I'll spin around to face you. So in your warrior two, we want hips completely facing out to the left. Now the left hip might lag a little bit and that's okay. They don't have to be precise, but they're moving in that direction. The arms are like blades slicing through the air and the shoulder blades are super heavy down the back. Okay, see if you can drop a little lower into that right hip. And although we want the right toes really pointed at that second and third, the right knee pointed at the second and third toes, we're still pulling back on that left heel, feeling the right heel, feeling that right hamstring um, engage. And we're still pressing into the outer edge of the left. So the legs are really strong. Okay, you get the idea. Now come on up to a triangle pose. We're going to extend that front knee. We're going to keep a little bend in it. Maybe shimmy the back foot forward. 
left toes still point forward. And let's take a long time to reach out over that right foot. Take your time. I like to take three breaths to really reach out there, lengthening in both sides of the rib cage. At some point, you're going to want to drop that right hand and grab the right leg somewhere. Just avoid pressing down on the knee. You can grab anywhere from the hip down to the floor, as long as it's not your knee, okay? And let's take a few breaths to settle in here. Once you feel a bit more uh, grounded in your triangle posture, I want you to reactivate your legs, okay? That's right, I'm still squeezing those knees toward each other, activating the inner thighs up and inward. And if all is going well in your triangle pose, you can really uh, get, get the most out of it, okay? By wrapping the belly button in and slightly pressing your hips forward. Maybe the left hand even reaches out to the right. Okay, I really want you to take up a lot of space here. Expand your body outward in all directions. Keep the legs strong. Keep the belly button pulling into the spine. One more big breath in here. As you inhale, bring your arms up and then allow that left hand to come to the left leg and slide down. Right hand reaches up overhead. Mm, big breath here. Let's take a few breaths. Reaching the right hand away from the right foot. Think of pulling the belly button into your spine, lengthening all sides of the belly. One more big breath in here. And we're bringing it down. Big exhale. We're bending that front knee. All hands come down inside the right foot. I'll meet you back in a down dog. Take a moment to notice how you feel. And let's keep moving. Inhaling here, heart forward, little vinyasa time, plank. Exhale, walk to your hands and fall. Roll it up, inhale. Sit down into your deepest chair squat yet. Lift your toes, look forward. Back up to standing, inhale, exhale, fold. Halfway up, inhale. Big fold, exhale. Palms are down, inhale to plank. Exhale all the way down. Inhale here, maybe cobra, maybe you press the tops of your feet down and lift your legs up off the floor for an up dog. Same idea, okay, heart moves forward. Exhale here, find your down dog. Let's take a few breaths in down dog. Five or six long, slow breaths, please. Let's find the hands gripping the mat quite intentionally and almost fiercely. And if you could think about lifting the center, just the center of your palm, how would that even feel, okay? Energetically lifting that center palm, armpits gazing in at each other, tailbone moves back and away, feet press back. Let's keep moving, okay? Inhaling here, left leg up and out behind. Exhaling here, step the left foot between your hands. We're dropping the right heel and heading to a warrior one. So inhaling up to your warrior one, hold here and breathe. Let's just refine it and settle in for a little while. So sometimes it might even help to kind of shimmy your left foot over to the left. So there's some, uh, like a railroad track of space underneath you rather than a balance beam. And we know we're sending that right hip forward as we press back into the right foot. So I really wanna encourage you to make that right leg a source of power right now. Press into the right heel. Send the right hip forward as you move the left hip back. Activate that left hamstring and drop into that left hip. Okay, here we are in warrior one. So find your warrior one shape, inhale. Exhale, spin your hips to face out to the right. 
Arms open to the right. Warrior two. Warrior one, inhale, spin those hips forward. Strong in your right leg. Exhale, warrior two. One more time, please. Big breath in, warriors. Exhale, warrior. Okay, hold here. I will spin around to face you. Ribs over hips, shoulders down the back. Okay, checking in to make sure that back toes point forward. Okay, warrior two is another one of those postures that seems so simple on the surface, but there's always work to be done. Okay, once you feel stable here, draw that left hip a little lower. Okay, get that, get the full benefits here. Transitioning to a triangle posture from here. Could you keep the strength between your legs and just extend the left knee, keep a little slight bend in it, and maybe we shimmy the right foot a little closer. Toes of the right foot still point toward the top of the mat. Let's take a long time to reach out to the left. Take your time. Maybe three full breaths. Okay, intentionally lengthening all sides of your torso. Finally, find a place to grab your left leg. You might have a block here that you'd like to put your hand on. You might even put your fingertips on the floor. Just avoid pressing on your knee, okay? And you get comfortable here, settle in. Sometimes a little fidgeting is in order. And then just be here. That's all we're gonna do, just exist. Take up a whole lot of space. Reach all of your arms and legs out, out, out. Okay, strong in your legs. Remember, you're still gathering the inner thighs up and toward the midline, but you're also pressing in to that outer edge of the right foot. If all is going well, belly button into spine, press the hips forward. So in the direction that you're looking, maybe I should say press them to the right. Maybe the right hand reaches overhead. Breathe, take up a lot of space. As you're ready, inhale yourself up to center. Find that core strength to pull yourself up. Allow the right hand to come to the right leg. The left arm comes up and over. We've just reversed ourselves into a reverse triangle posture. So breathe here with me, strong in the legs. Remember, lift the belly button in. You can even turn this into a tiny back bend if you like. Should feel good. One more big breath in and come on out on your exhale. Cartwheel your hands down in front. We have to bend the front knee. Boom, boom. I'll meet you in a down dog. Walk it out here. Notice how you feel and let it go. Inhaling here, heart forward, plank. Exhaling, walk to your hands. And fold. Roll it up on the inhale. Down into a, your deepest chair squat ever on the exhale. Nice and low. See if you can get the hips level with your knees. Back up to standing inhale. Big fold exhale. Inhale, halfway up, look forward. Exhale, big, deep fold. Hug your legs. Palms down. Inhale, back to plank. Exhale, all the way down. Halfway up. Sorry, cobra comes up. Inhale with that heart. Maybe you press the floor away as you lift your heart into an upward-facing dog. And exhale here. Downward-facing dog. This will be our last downward-tracing dog of this practice. 
And I just want to stop here for a moment with you so we can notice how different it feels. I think down dog is one of the most gratifying postures to follow throughout a practice because you really do notice a big difference in the backs of the legs and the calves and the shoulders. Let's take a moment to congratulate yourself for a great practice so far. And then let that go. We're coming down to hands and knees. And let's get a little bit stretchy. We've gotten quite warm. So this is a great time for us to stretch it out. So we can take the right foot forward and drop it by the right hand. And because we're a bit warm, we might move the, the back knee, the left knee back a little bit. And we'll rock the hips forward and back. So your most gentle option here is to keep super grounded with your right toes on the floor and your left knee on the floor. But if you'd like a little bit more from that right uh, back of the leg, I wanna invite you to flex that right ankle and point the toes at your nose so that you really feel the calf and even a little more lengthening in that right hamstring. You want even more than that, tuck the left toes, hover the left knee, and you've got a little bit more space to move that hamstring into. So all about that right hamstring right now. The next time you drop that right foot, drop the uh, left knee. We'll come down into this for a little while. So maybe, maybe you're coming down to your elbows here. We'll just sink into this low lunge and kind of enjoy it. Maybe we walk the right foot out to the right a little bit and let the knee kind of hang open to the right. I do want to encourage you to drop your head and just exist here in this lunge. Okay, although mainly your focus is just on existing, I do want a little activity in your legs. So remember the inner thigh, engaging inward kind of feeling. Bring that in here. Notice how it feels, even in these postures where we're mostly just letting go. If we do a little bit, if we contribute a little bit of engagement, then we, we tend to reap greater rewards as far as therapeutic benefits and healthy tissue lengthening. If you came down on your elbows, come back up on your hands and we'll pull the hips back again. So again, we're flexing that uh, right ankle here, finding a lot of length in the back of the right leg. So let's stay here and open up a little bit more. So let's move the left knee back a little bit. So you, you decide it's gonna be different for all of us, but move it so it's back behind your hips. And then I want you to drop the inner edge of your right foot to the floor. So your right toes are now pointed over to the left. And as a matter of fact, your hands are gonna walk all the way out to the left, maybe even off of your mat. And I want you to just kind of rock back and forth with your hips. So what you're doing here is you're gently lengthening the tissues on the inside of your right leg, inner thigh, okay? So be gentle, <laughs> nothing crazy here. You're still trying to pull that right hip back. So right hip is moving toward the back of the mat right now. And then let's bring this through center. So let's walk the hands back to center, point the right knee or right toes up at the ceiling. Now let's point the right toes over to the right and you might need to bring the back knee forward a little bit. And we're walking our hands out to the right. So we've just crossed to the other side of the leg. Really nice flex in your right foot. Yes, your right hip is still moving back. And we can kind of windshield wiper that right foot, pointing the toes up and to the right. And then maybe you decide that you kind of stay with the toes pointing to the right. And if you are a runner or a cyclist, this is a lot of IT band, a lot of outer hips. So you might feel this a lot. So get your big breath ready. Mm. Let's bring this back to center. And 
from here, I want to transition us to a uh, pigeon. So we just need to shimmy this right foot to the left side of the mat. We'll probably have to pick the right arm up to do that. And we'll drop the right knee. Okay. So your hips may not come all the way down to the ground, and that's okay. Not a problem. They don't have to be on the ground. But keep your hands out in front of you. I don't want to fold all the way down yet. So stay up with me for a moment here. Look at your hips. You may notice um, that your left hip is very far away from the mat compared to your right. See if you can make them perfectly level with each other. And that's where we want to start, okay? If it's too much in your right hip, it's just too much, move the right foot closer to your hips. You can almost kind of sit on it, okay? See if that helps, okay? If you want more, you can move the right foot away from your hips. I wouldn't bring it past your knee though, okay? That's as far as I would take it. Once you feel pretty good in your pigeon pose, and we've been here for quite a bit, I'd say come down to the elbows when you feel ready. Let your head hang heavily. Again, we're back in one of these postures where our goal is to let go. However, we do need a little engagement, okay? We don't wanna lengthen tissues passively. That can lead to an injury cycle and we don't want that. So when we're lengthening tissues, we always need a bit of engagement. So keep that in mind, please. Take care of those muscles. To think of engaging here, you can think of plugging the, the left hip, that's the long leg. So think of plugging the long leg into its hip socket. You'll feel the glute turn on, the hamstring, the quad, everything. And think of gently resisting the floor with your right leg. So plug in and resist <laughs> and breathe. Over time, you may feel yourself sinking lower. Let's see if we could get the heart to the floor and the head on the floor. Arms come out. Remember to engage just enough. And find that perfect homeostasis of effort and ease. And that's why we're here, friends. All right, pigeon should be feeling real good. Make your way out slowly. Okay, there's no rush at all. You have plenty of time. But once you're back up on your hands, you can tuck the back toes. Scooch that back knee forward a little bit and make your way back to hands and knees. And after that pigeon, all that work in the right leg and the hip, we might take the knees and the hands kind of wide and, and circle it out. So hips and shoulders describe little circles over the hands and the knees. And you might get some crackles and pops and that's not a problem. As long as it feels good, take it back the other way. All right, I'll meet you back at center, hands and feet back to normal, or hands and knees back to normal. And we'll take the left foot forward by the left hand. And we'll start to get a little bit stretchy here. So again, we're pretty warm, so we can move the right knee back if we want. Hips move back, hips move forward. Okay, we have the gentle option here, more grounded. We can kick it up in the calf, that left calf, by flexing the left ankle. We want a real strong flex in it, okay? It doesn't matter if you bend the knee. You can totally bend the knee and, and the posture will still remain the same. Perhaps a little bit more opening in that left hamstring. We lift the right knee. We've just got a little bit more space that way. Okay, next time you come forward into that lunge, let's just enjoy it. Let's sink down into the lunge for a little while. Just let gravity help out. 
So maybe come down to one or two elbows here. Maybe you stay up on your hands. Maybe you've got a block. Let that head hang. Check out your hips. Make sure they're level with the mat. Okay, always helpful to keep those hips level. Maybe the left foot kind of points out to the left, kind of waggles itself out there. Remember to engage a little bit. Just enough. Maybe gravity does 95% of the work and you do five. All right, if you came down on your elbows, let's come back up and we'll get more into the left hamstring now. So let's pull the hips back, okay? We do want to flex the left foot so that we feel that opening in the calf. And we do want a little tiny, maybe a little bend in the right and the left knee, but let's see if we could lengthen the spine as much as possible while we do this. And you know, we're still pulling that left hip back, of course. So finding some space in that left hamstring. Now let's make this a little bit weird, okay? Let's take it a little bit different direction. So let's drop the inner edge of the left foot to the floor. We'll walk our hands out to the right. So all our fingers and toes, or left fingers, uh, left toes and all the fingers are pointed out to the right. Maybe move the right knee back a little bit just to give yourself some space. And we're opening up that left inner thigh. So you can kind of rock the hips back, rock the hips forward. Okay, hopefully that feels nice. Just kind of feel it out. And then as you're ready, we'll bring this back through center. So we walk in our hands back to center, pointing the left toes up again. We might need to scoot the right knee back in. And now we're taking it to the left. So all the toes will point to the left of the left foot. Left toes point to the left. Hands walk out to the left. And we're rolling onto the outer edge of that foot. So the IT band is talking to you. And we might windshield wiper the foot a couple times, pointing it up and to the left, up to the left. Remember, you're still pulling the left hip back here. That's still a thing. And then as you're ready, hang out here and breathe, just pulling that left hip back. And let that IT band, the glute open up. And let's walk it back into center here. And let's transition it to a pigeon. So if we have one hand on either side of this left leg and we bend that left knee, we can walk the left foot to the right and drop the left knee, finding a pigeon. So take your time. I want you to take a lot of time getting in so that we can make it right. So hands out in front, maybe you take them forward just to support your upper body. Look at your hips. Make sure the right hip is just as low as the left. Do you need to adjust the left foot and pull it in closer to you? You can almost sit on it here if you want to. If you want extra opening in the left hip, you need a little more, you pull that foot out away. I would say don't take it past your knee, okay? So figure out where you wanna be and then it's time to sink down to the elbows. With a long neck, please let your head hang. <sighs> Once you've settled in, let's think of engaging our legs properly. Okay, pulling that uh, right leg into the hip socket like we're trying to plug it in. So glute, hamstring, quad, turn on. And the left leg is gently resisting the ground. Nothing crazy, just a gentle resistance. Maybe once this posture melts open a little bit, we bring the forehead all the way down and the hands reach out.
your time coming up out of this. And once your hands are back under your shoulders, you can scooch that back knee forward. Come back to hands and knees. Oh, okay, we'll transition down to a seat here. So just sit your hips to one side. And we're rolling onto our backs. So I'll meet you laying down. Come on down. Take your arms out wide here. We'll just seal our practice off with a nice twist just to realign the spine, massage out all the organs in the back. So if your knees are pointed up, you can just scoot your hips out to the right. Scooch into the right side of the mat. Drop the knees to the left. Maybe the left hand grabs a knee and kind of holds it there. But let's look away over to the right. Grounding that right shoulder blade. Let's take several long, slow breaths here. Think long spine inhale as you arch the right side of the chest up off the floor. And making sure to keep the shoulder blades grounded as you exhale, pull the belly button to the spine. Long spine, inhale. Strong belly, exhale. Maybe one more breath, friends. All right. Let's bring the knees back through center. And then we'll switch sides. The hips will scoot to the left side of the mat and knees drop to the right. Maybe the right hand grabs a knee. They'll be definitely grounding that left shoulder blade and looking to the left. Close your eyes, find your deepest breath. Long spine, inhale. Strong belly, exhale. Your upper body is so spacious here. It almost feels like you're doing a back bend up off the floor as you ground your shoulder blades. Put that much space in your chest. Maybe one more breath. Feels good. Let's bring the legs back in and release legs out long. Find your resting posture, okay? Maybe Shavasana is your resting posture today. Maybe something else with knees and arms bent, perhaps. <sighs> Allow your breath to return to normal. Releasing all effort. Allow your body to melt into the floor. Feel the earth's gravity pulling you downward. And allow that to be so. With each wave of breath, become more present in this moment. What do you feel right now? What do you hear right now? This moment is all we have, yogis. Be present with yourself right now.
Please keep resting this way for as long as you can. Thank you so much for joining me.